The following program is brought to you by Element 14, the electronics community where you can connect and collaborate with top engineers from around the world. Join now at element14.com slash presents. Welcome back to Element 14 Presents. My name is DJ, and today I'm gonna to be making a big old flip phone. Let's get started. Amazing hacks. Inspired designs. Each week, Element 14 Presents brings you innovative projects using electronics, engineering, and more. Now, the last time I made a Pi-based phone, there were quite a few comments on the size. And I think you're right. The size does need to change. So that's why I've decided to make it even bigger and completely unwieldy. Why, you may ask? Well, that's a good question. Now, if we're gonna do this build right, we need to choose the major components that will constrain the design. Now, a phone needs a few major things in order for it to work. First of all, a display and a processor to control everything, some sort of cellular radio so we can actually connect to the cellular network, a power supply, and some input so we can actually, you know, control the thing. For the screen, I'm gonna go with the good old fashioned official Raspberry Pi display. It's fairly affordable, it's a breeze to work with, it's easily mountable, and uh, it'll look great in a portrait orientation. So for the heart of the system, I'm gonna be using the Pi 3A Plus. It's uh, my new favorite go-to Pi board because it's compact, it's powerful, and honestly, I don't ever really need to use the Ethernet networking. It's got Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. That's enough for me. And uh, this will also be paired with an external microcontroller, which I'll talk a little bit more about in the future. So for input, you might be thinking, well, you've already got the official Raspberry Pi display, and it does have a capacitive touch controller that works great. But personally, I find capacitive touch screens to be super boring. They're on everything and it's completely unimaginative. So I'm gonna be using some Cherry keyboard keys for the keypad down below. So these will be arranged in a typical numpad fashion as well as some directional arrows above with some yes, no, answer, hang up buttons to the side just for some tactile feel. And I'll 3D print some custom keycaps to go on top of the keys for, you know, added flair. So for connectivity, I'm gonna be using this 2G GSM breakout board. And yes, I still have access to a 2G connection here on the west coast of the United States. I do know it's going away soon and 3G and 4G modules, of course, do exist, but they're more expensive. And I've already got this on hand, so it's what I'm going to stick with. Now, I do have to have a cellular plan because there's no free lunch, and just because this is a small project doesn't mean the telcos won't get their blood money. Um, so I do have a pay-as-you-go SIM card installed in the back. And I, of course, need to have an SMA antenna that connects directly to the board. And this just needs a direct connection to the lithium polymer battery for power because these radios can draw up to about two amps peak at about four volts. And this will just connect via UART to the Raspberry Pi. So for power, I'm gonna be using just this single cell 18650 lithium polymer battery. Now this is totally not enough to run this for any significant length of time. I think uh, the back of the hand math I did said maybe about an hour, but that's totally enough time for testing. Now for this, I'm just going to switch it on and off via a toggle switch here at the bottom of the shell of the phone. And this will connect directly to the GSM module, which needs the raw voltage range of a LiPo battery. And then from there, I'll connect to this boost converter, which can handle a hefty 25 watt load, which is great. Um, of course, this little battery can't handle a sustained 25 watt output, um, but for peak output, I think we'll be okay for little surges. Many GSM modules operate based off of a simple serial AT command interface. Now, I won't go into the nitty gritty of what that means, but 
If you have an interest in telecom history and networking, I highly recommend checking it out. There are hundreds of different AT commands, and of course it depends on the manufacturer. But suffice it to say that they're simple and most importantly human readable commands that you send via serial and you get a simple straightforward uh, response back. So that's how I'm gonna be using the Pi to connect to the network. The design of the phone is pretty straightforward. I've got two main shells that will hinge together and the hinges have holes so that I can uh, feed the wires from the upper shell to the lower shell. And each shell has a face plate that is glued in place, whereas on the back there are holes for screws so that I can uh, have access to each shell and the electronics inside. All right, so I thought I'd take a second to talk a little bit more about the internal structure of the phone. So you might think, wow, that's kind of a, a mess of wires. And yes, it is, uh, you know, quite a little rat's nesty. But, you know, I figured what's the point of having all these GPIO if I'm not gonna take advantage of them? And this microcontroller isn't gonna be doing all that much, so I don't need to be stingy about them. So I've got all my switches, uh, one per GPIO and of course all of them tied to a common ground. So this will just act as our USB keyboard. And the benefit to that is while this could have been uh, matrixed, it would have meant more wires going through the pivot points of the hinge. Instead of all that, I can just have a USB cable. So I've just got a regular micro USB-B connector and I have already gone ahead and stripped off these wires. And so this will just feed right through that pivot point and of course into the upper shell. So you can see that slot where the wires feed through. So we'll have the USB connection on the left and on the right we'll have the power connection. So we'll have five volts ground and the uh, RX and TX for the UART um, to connect the Pi to the GSM modem. We'll also, of course, have to have uh, wires for the speaker because the speaker will uh, route from the top of the phone down to the GSM modem down below too. So this uh, inner piece um, is where most of the electronics are secured. Um, this cutout right here is where the LiPo rests and these little slots are for zip ties so that I can just zip tie the battery in place right there and that way everything will be nice and tidy and these little cutouts, uh, these key into tabs or protrusions uh, on the inside of the shell. So that will mate really nicely on the inside right there. And for a little more detail on the hinge, you'll notice that these are just separate uh, little bits right here. And I always like to print things with as little support material as possible so that all the surfaces are requiring minimal cleanup and post-processing. And this just makes the assembly a lot easier too. This piece will just be glued to the lower shell and it just makes it easier too because of course we've got these uh, bits that extend out into the hinge and if they were both printed in place then this would have to have some way to fit around them. So rather than do anything more complicated, I can just have this loose and then pop these in to the side. And I also left them with a hole uh, just so that I could feed the wires through if I needed to get some pliers uh, in there to move things around. And I just got these little cap pieces so that when everything's all good to go, we don't have exposed wiring sticking out. Now you'll notice there are some slots right here too. Um, originally, I downloaded a model of the official Raspberry Pi display and it looked great. It, would, it seemed super accurate. I measured some of the big dimensions, but it turned out that the model I downloaded somehow had the screw profiles offset by like a couple millimeters. So uh, when I, I printed an earlier version of this and it just totally didn't line up and it ruined my day because this is like a 12 hour print. And so I just went ahead and added a new version rather than uh, futz about because I could tell that it was vertically okay, but horizontally it was offset by 
some weird uh, decimal, decimal amount of a few millimeters. So I just added some slots so I can just manually adjust the LCD so that it looks fine horizontally. Okay, we are just about done. It's uh, nearly good to go. I've got all the keycaps on there. The screen's looking nice and good. I didn't accidentally scratch it, which I was terrified of doing the entire time. And the wiring is okay. You know, believe it or not, this is actually what the original iPhone looked like on the inside. Pretty much exactly this. So let me go write some code, code software bits and uh, we'll make this thing work. So as with all of our videos, you can always find the code, 3D files, and build materials at element14.com forward slash presents. Don't ask for them in the comments. Find it in the link in the description below. I'll be done here in a second. All right, moment of truth. Let's uh, let's turn this bad girl on. Try not to get all the glare in there. The screen is super shiny. So I've just got a custom little boot screen or splash screen, I should say. And it should after the GUI loads up. All right, let's. Oh, type some numbers. Look, look at all these numbers. I'm typing them. That's not what's supposed to happen. Let's go back. Oh, no, you're the wrong character. I screwed up. All right, so we're back in business. Let's try that again. All right, clear the numbers. Great, fantastic. Now I'm going to dial my own phone number off screen. I'll let you see my area code and then I'll Move over here. We should. Oh, what's this? A phone call from my Pi Phone Plus Plus? Fantastic. And we'll just hang up on myself. I don't need to talk to myself. I talk to myself all the time. In fact, I'm talking to myself right now. There's not really an audience. You're not really there. I'm just talking to a camera in an empty room, as most YouTubers do. Well, it's not exactly a Motorola Razor. But uh, I'm pretty happy with the design of my big old flip phone. This uh, is definitely just a proof of concept. Uh, I would have to spend a considerable amount of time to do uh, any reasonable uh, user interface to make this even approaching what we had, you know, 15 or even 20 years ago. But uh, it's still a platform that I can work on. And by work on, I mean put on a shelf and start five other projects while I occasionally look at and think about working on. But uh, if anything, it's another cool Raspberry Pi portable platform that I can tinker with whenever I want. Well, that's gonna do it for myself and my flip phone here. You might think it's impractical, but you never know. Maybe you might wanna make one of your own to give to your grandparents or your friends or anyone. Who wouldn't love to receive a giant phone that you can't physically fit on your body unless you've got like a fanny pack or some sort of giant novelty belt clip? Hmm, that sounds like a good add-on. I think I'll go make that. I'll see you guys next time.